kind, obedient, obedient cheerful, cheerful, thrifty, thrifty brave, brave, clean, clean, and reverent. Thank you for that. Um, you guys can put yourself on mute as you'd like. Um, we've got some uh, folks who are going to be doing a few uh, what's going on, state of the council kind of things right now, and uh, we'll do some review, and then we're going to open it up for discussion for everybody. Um, so I'm going to actually turn it over first to Eric Kari. Um, he is our training chair, uh, as well as our Cedar Valley District Executive, and he's going to share a little bit about what the advancements adjustments look like for COVID-19. So Eric, I'm turning it over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Liz. Oh, I have um, just a second. Go ahead. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you, Liz. Um, uh, I am actually the staff advisor for uh, training currently. Uh, that's right. uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, Lisa Vasquez is our uh, council training chairman. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to hit on a few things uh, for Cub Scouts, particularly uh, re with related to advancement. Uh, first and foremost, um, the uh, you know parents of uh, families that, um, uh, that have kids in the program that are uh, working on uh, requirements at home can certainly sign off on those requirements uh, at this point through July 31st of 2020. Normally, a den leader would be the one to sign off, but we're in uh, unique times. So again, uh, the a parent can sign off on those requirements. Um, Cub Scouts can, can continue to work on their advancements through July 31st of 2020 that they're currently working on. So say, for example, your child is a wolf right now. Normally, usually about Mayish time frame, they would be transitioning into their new rank. Um, but because again, that uh, some of our families uh, are unable to uh, do as much, um, they're giving them more time to complete those requirements. So, um, you know, that's, that's a little bit about what's going on with Cub Scouting. Um, Liz has a, a website up there um, with some frequently asked questions. Um, if you visit uh, that page, one of the uh, items that I specifically wanted to hit on was a link for Scouting at Home. There's some great resources there uh, for you to do at home. Um, and one new particular one I wanted to highlight was the yo-yo adventure. Um, so if you uh, visit that page, you'll be able to go to the Scouting at Home and uh, pre do the new yo-yo uh, preview adventure. It's sponsored by Duncan Toys. So I encourage you to take a look at that one, as well as a few others that are on there. Um, it's, it's a, it's a required area, an adventure that's not in your book. So again, please take a look at those um, and uh, check it out. So that's a little information on Cub Scouts and advancements. Uh, does anyone have any questions on advancement before we move on to the next section? Feel free to unmute yourself if you do. All right, hearing none, we are going to go on. Um, Alex Osterberg uh, messaged me that she's having some connections difficulties, so I'm going to cover some of this on her behalf. Um, uh, as we do some virtual scouting, uh, we do want to keep in mind that we are following all of our safe scouting practices. Um, in particular, uh, for online uh, activities, they must fall within our current uh, youth protection guidelines. Um, I have a couple links up there that help share some of those um, specific guidelines. But uh, keep in mind that for working with lions and tigers, parents need to be involved. We need to have to be leadership um, or at least uh, a parent uh, in the room, for example, uh, this falls into place if we are doing like a, if particularly in Scouts BSA when they're doing a, a Scout Master Conference, there needs to be another adult in the room. Um, beyond that, there are questions of privacy um, and so some of the other important things to keep in mind is we want to try to safeguard our scouts personal information as much as possible, which means we want to try to use platforms that don't require us to share sensitive data um, online. And we want to be mindful that we are not sharing sensitive data online. Um, in uh, as well, uh, recording online meetings is not authorized if scouts are present. Um, this meeting is being recorded, but being that it is a leader meeting and will be only shared uh, with other, our other leaders, um, that doesn't fall quite in the same category, but 
Uh, we are not allowed to record online meetings with you. Um, and also keep in mind that we are not allowed to collect personal information from youth under 13. Um, these are just some of the good practices that have come out with national and they bear repeating as we uh, try to um, to uh, do our, the best we can online. Alex, I see that you uh, your computer decided to obey. Uh, do you want to add anything to what I said? I, I just heard, do you want to add anything to what I said? <laughs> I sound That's all right. Um, does anyone have any questions about some of the, the safe scouting online stuff? If you do remember to unmute yourself so that you can speak. If you want to know how to unmute yourself. <laughs> all right. Does that work? Yes, Amy, I can hear you. What did I miss? We will, all of this will be uh, posted in the event as well. Um, okay. It's on our Facebook page, so uh, rather than go over everything again, um, you can catch the beginning earlier. We covered uh, basically what advancement changes have been made right now. Okay, okay. perfect. All right. So, um, Roger Berquist, are you on? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? I can. Excellent. Can you see me? Um, I probably can if I find you in my list. Um, they can all see the Cub Scout Summertime Award thing here. I've asked Roger to share a little bit about this. He's kind of our um, local expert on the Summertime Awards. So Roger, it's all yours. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can make it so you can see me. I have actual visual aids as well. Oh, um, sure. I will do that. Thank, thanks for turning in. Oh, there we go. Hi, Liz. Um, okay, but so, I can't actually see, Roger. Is your video on? I don't know. I know my 11-year-old <laughs> kid already left. So, Oh, if I put start video, is that helping? Yes, hit the start video. Okay. Take pictures, allow. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Oh, there I am. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. So, um, I know Major Tim Adam has yeah. come and talked to UNIT about your uniform being who you are. So as your son or daughter makes the leap from this uniform to this uniform, the things that we can do as leaders to help the guys uh, be standing tall and looking good. There are a number of summertime opportunities which benefit the scout and the unit. Um, scouts that and units that have have a program running during the summer have better attention and it helps keep that momentum that we worked so hard to create during the course of the year going to make the fall a little easier and we all know that the fall is a little dicey when it's you know welcome to scouting and oh it's popcorn time so <clears throat> the awards that we're going to talk about tonight are the uh cub scout Outdoor Activity Award, and then the National Summertime Awards. Um, the linchpin of each one of these awards for the Scout is attending summer camp. For the National Summertime Award, each one of these ranks, the first piece is to attend a summer camp. Then there's a list of things that the Scout and family choose from to have them earn the award. And the further along the trail they go, oddly enough, the more uh, pieces they end up doing. So it's things like operate a compass, tell what you do when you are lost, uh, explain the buddy system, what are good things to have in your backpack, just basically real good scouting things. And then the scout earns this. The uh, summertime activity award, is also the same. Uh, for this, oh, I have it backwards. All right, so what I just talked about was for this, and for these, your Cub Scout pack decides on items for, all right, those of you that are doing tracking, here it is, National Summertime Pack. Um, 
This is how you apply for the award. Shelly gets this and works her magic. But for the scout, they need to attend the events in June, July, and August. For your pack to receive, after this is filled out, this beautiful certificate, plus a streamer for your guide on, um, is to have only one, or a minimum of one scout at each event. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same scout at all three events, but if you have uh, participation in your three events, you as a unit have earned the Summertime Activity Award. So um, this is from 2016. So PAC 171 did council camps for June. For July, we did the Moondogs game. In August, we had a camp out at Cedar Point. So those were our three events. So the kids that attended all three of those earned the pin to wear on their uniform. The brief summary is found in the back of your wolf or tiger or bear or Weeblos book, talking about that and also the um, placement of the uh, award on the uniform. On a personal note, so here's the advancement sheet. Um, go ahead and fill this out with the uh, scout's name and what the award is. Um, I know I learned that uh, one of our boys is just about through his uh, through to collect his eagle, and so um, Janelle ran his person report, and there were items missing. And fortunately, I'm a record keeper, so I could go back and say, "Aha!" So unit leaders, go ahead and file this and it will get added to the scout um, person report. So when they finish or become adult leaders, which we hope they all will, uh, all will be well. I'll field your questions, as I can. Does anyone have any questions for Roger? And I, I'm, Roger, I'm gonna throw up the little slide that I had shared um, about it. Uh, okay. Uh, the reason I, I asked Roger to do this, we had actually been planning on him chatting uh, at our in-person roundtable about this anyway, but given the um, chaos of this spring and all, all the things that have had to be canceled, I would really strongly encourage your units to plan to uh, go for the setback award and have something in each month, June, July, and August. Um, as Roger said, the scout camps uh, that we host via Cub Camps do count for this award, um, so long as your unit participates. So um, I think it will be good for us to help get folks re-engaged as uh, we are able to start meeting again. Um, and no one quite knows where that, when that is, so uh, hopefully it will be in time for, for our summer awards. Any other Questions? Are you talking about Cub Camp and later on? We are uh, next, actually. Okay, I had something I wanted to say, but I don't. Want, I didn't want to jump in the agenda. So. <laughs> um, so, hearing no other specific questions, thank you so much, Roger, for sharing your wisdom. Um, and I am going to go on and spend just a few minutes on uh, Cub Scout summer camps. All of this information is as of today. Uh, some of these schedules are obviously subject to change because all of everything is changing uh, and we're very dependent on what Governor Walls has to say to us and uh, as well as national guidelines and just determining whether it is safe or not for us to gather in groups. Um, right now, most uh, Cub Scout camps are planned as that, that uh, did not happen but moving forward, they will all have scheduled. Um, the exceptions to that are the May shooting sports. Um, both Norseland and Cedar Point have been postponed. We are working uh, with our shooting sports staff to figure out the best dates for those. They will come in June. Uh, and those dates publish you as soon as they rise with our staff. Um, the May 9th STEM camp, is going to happen. The caveat there is that it may be in person and it may be online, depending on what uh, the school districts say and do 
um, whether or not that May 4th reopen of our school systems happens or not. Um, Ray, what did you want to add? Um, I was going to say on that STEM camp, go ahead and register. That is a free camp. We will be shipping materials to, to you if uh, uh, it is going to be an online type of camp. It is a firm limit of 25 kids, and it's half full now. So if you have kids interested, I would not wait. The Northwoods Weeblos Camp, we have extended the early bird deadline from May 1st to June 1st. And for all of our camps, if they're postponed or you're not willing to go because of fears of uh, the, uh, the coronavirus, we are offering 100% refunds. That is different than our normal refund policy, but we also understand uh, the fears and hesitations that parents have today. Uh, so I would recommend that you go ahead and register for the events. It helps us with planning, but with literally no risk because if even if a parent says hey you may be having the camp but because of the uh the situation we're not comfortable we will offer a 100 percent refund for this year so i wanted to just add that so everyone was new and aware um i will say the one caveat we have on this current schedule is our moon, da moon dogs event uh as of this point we have not heard uh, whether or not the Northwoods League season is going to be happening. Um, I don't think they know yet. So if um, Munda, if, if the games are canceled, that event won't happen, even if uh, things open back up. But that is a question. Um, and if we say we're not quite sure yet, or it depends a lot, that's just the reality of trying to adjust to the changing uh, news cycle that we all have. Um, other questions right now on Cub Camps? Um, not really a question on Cub Camps, but the whole Globetrotter game deal. Um, is there any news on that at all? There is some news on Globetrotters. Um, they are in the process of rescheduling their entire tour. Okay. Um, any tickets that were purchased will automatically, uh, folks will either uh, be given the option to refund those or to go to the new date. But until we know the new date, I haven't heard, they haven't sent us those options yet. Oh, okay, um, thank you much. So that's where that is at. Um, so they'll either be a full refund or you'll be able to attend the new event. All right, excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about online platforms and then we're gonna open it up for discussion. Um, and we're gonna play a little game. So some of the platforms I, I wanted to talk about um, a little bit, uh, particularly for Cub Scouts, um, Facebook Live is a great opportunity to get in touch with your Cub Scouts. Uh, keep in mind, this is uh, generally one person speaking. So I would say if the Cub Master or, or someone wanted to send a message, to um, the entire pack, that would be a place to do so. And I would encourage you to do those in your private pack group and not your public pack page, if that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions on about what that difference looks like, please let me know. Um, but this is a way to say, um, hey, uh, pack 12, um, hope you're getting out and exercising, make sure to send us some pictures here about what you're doing and what you're up to right now. You know, that kind of communication, that kind of engagement. Because um, our Cub Scouts are not on Facebook, it is through the parents that they're getting that uh, data. So uh, we are covering our bases too for having to be leadership because even if you're speaking, the parent by necessity has to share that with their child. Um, Zoom obviously is a platform that we are using uh, quite a bit in meetings. Chances are you have been on it long before today in the last few weeks. Um, it is uh, free uh, for folks to use. I think they have waived a bunch of their fees for groups to get together, so I encourage you to try it out. Um, I know our den of lions had a den meeting last week on Zoom, and it was chaotic, and it was fun, and it was really good for those kindergartners to see each other. Um, Again, good tips is to try to keep people on mute until they want to talk. 
with the Lions uh, specifically, we did a lot of thumbs up in answering questions or uh, waited until we were called on to speak um, and uh, used our parents as ways to help manage that, uh, that event. And it turned out pretty well. Um, if you want, we're going to talk more about ideas and how, what we can do on these platforms in a little bit. Um, Google Hangouts is another uh, product that works similar to Zoom. Um, keep in mind that this does require a Google account. And um, typically, student Google accounts, if they have one for school that they're using uh, via Omniportal or any of those things, those will not work for a public Google Hangouts. So someone needs to have a Google account, a parent or something like that. Um, other things, keep in mind, there is a lot of information, um, particularly being shared on Facebook, about opportunities for youth enrichment right now. A lot of celebrities are reading books. A lot of, um, there are a lot of STEM YouTube demonstrations. There are a lot of Cub Scout demonstrations online. Uh, there are all sorts of virtual tours of uh, museums and zoos and things that you can do right now. There are online challenges that you can do via a Facebook platform. And there's something called Kahoot Games. And we are going to play a Kahoot game here because uh, we know that the best uh, way of learning is by doing. So we are going to play a game. So if you are on a computer today, I recommend you get out your phone because that's going to be the easiest way to play the game and still listen to what I have to say. So if you can get out your phone, you can either download the Kahoot app or you can visit the Kahoot.it on your browser. So I'm going to switch my screen here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, new share. <laughs> okay, so we are going to play a Kahoot, and I have created a game especially for us today. All right, so I'm going to try to get the game up. As you log into Kuhu, there will be a couple initial questions, or you will see a, and if, as you go through them, you will see a spot that says pin. Enter your game pin. And the game pin is going to hop, pop up on your screen here in a minute. Does everyone see the pin? As you see it, enter it into your, uh, game and you will show up as a player right here. So we're going to give you all a minute. All right, we have, and you can put in your name, you can choose one of the random ones too. All right, I see we have seven players. We're going to give it another minute or two. Now we don't know who each other is. That's no fun. Well, we'll <laughs> see. We'll, we'll identify who the winner is. We'll see if they, they, uh, Reveal themselves at the end. All right. I see nine online. Anyone else trying to get in? I am, but it's going to take a while, it looks like. <laughs> okay, we're up to ten. Seven, 12, 13. Awesome. So here's a little rundown of what's going to happen. When I hit start, you are going to get a question on your computer screen. And you are going to have to answer it via your phone if you're on your phone um, or in your browser. But prob I think most of you guys are probably on your phone. Um, keep in mind the answers and where you put, you are going to input your answer on whatever device you are playing the game on, not on the screen in front of you. Okay? 
The one other thing I recommend is that the amount of points you receive is based on the speed in which you answer. All right, I am going to hit start. So everyone get prepared for some Cub Scout trivia. 15 people, here we go. Oh, you guys knew it. I did not trick you. All right, so it looks like everyone who put in a question answer got that correct. Here we go. Next question. Oh, and see, so Polite Lizard, whoever's Polite Lizard was our fastest to get the answer. So they have the most points right now. They're the ones to beat after question one. Here we go. All right. Let's see where we go. Polite lizard remains in the lead, but fast rooster jumped up quite a bit. So let's keep an eye out. Here we go. I swear I hit the right one. <laughs> All right, good job, guys. Oh, and we have a new leader. Excited Panther has taken the lead. This is kind of a trick question. And now this is one we can argue about because it used to be Bobcat. So I understand why people got confused there. Good job. Wonder Deer. Wow, five, uh, five correct answers in a row. Here we go, question six. Nicely done. Oh, Wonder Deer has extended their lead. Can we catch them? I don't know. What did that say? Oh, damn. Correct. Wonder Deer continues to exceed. Excel.
This is another one of those tricky ones. In 1928, they did a few pilot programs, but it launched for everyone in 1930. 1910, again, was the launch of Scouts, or the Boy Scouts of America, but the Cub Scout program started in 1930. Joyful. All right, Joyful Emu is trying to catch up. Will they make it? Last question. All right. In third place, Captain Urchin. Second place, Joyful Emo. And in first place, it's Wonder Deer. Do any of our, our leaders want to admit who they are? I am Captain Urchin. Wonder Deer. All right. What did you guys think of that? You guys can unmute yourself and talk. It's all right. It was fun. Just don't confuse yourself on the other screen when you got the do, because like two of the questions, I was clicking on the wrong screen and yep. it wasn't registering. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and that's what I'm sticking with. <laughs> yeah. It is a little tricky when you're doing it online. This is also a platform that can be done in person um, mm -hmm. where, where you are projecting it on a screen and everyone has their phone, so there's only one thing to push. Um, but it makes for kind of a fun interactive piece. Um, and I, I didn't choose, I, I put that together with questions we probably knew the answers to, but for uh, thinking about how we could use that to test some of the Bobcat rank even, or to just uh, have a fun uh, pack game with our units. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, at this point, I am going to open it up for some discussion. Um, I We've been talking and I have shared some of the stuff we've seen out there, but the bigger question is, what are you guys doing right now? Are you, have you had any luck doing any meetings, any um, virtual communications, any extra things? Are you guys feeling dead in the water right now? Um, what, uh, where are you guys at and what might be helpful? Um, so here are some of the questions that I was thinking of, but um, I'm going to kind of open it up uh, to those of you uh, who are on our call to kind of share what, if anything, uh, you're working on now. What have you tried? Um, so does anyone want to kick us off? So um, I am not taking credit for this by any means, but PAC 91 uh, put out a challenge for being outside. It started with hiking, biking kind of things, but then now it's translated to even if you're playing or doing yard work or whatnot, um, the scouts track their miles, so to speak. And then any, the incentive is um, individually to get 50 miles over the course of this time but then it's also being submitted to the leadership and then it's being documented like we're gonna essentially be walking however miles are documented so like we got an email saying hey we've walked um, outside of Mankato now or we're on our way to New Ulm or, or whatnot and then it'll get further um, each time they kind of check in so just a, a little way to get the kids motivated to go outside. That's great. Um, I know PAC 12, well, David, you can always talk about it too, but um, we put out an on a scavenger hunt that they are doing. Um, and uh, our Jenny, our committee chair, put that together and 
uh, when they complete a scavenger hunt, they're actually getting a red box movie rental code um, as, a, as a little prize they can earn. Has anyone tried a, any online meetings with, with folks from your pack? Um, I've been trying them, but I'm kind of been dead in the water a little bit. The kids are so busy with online stuff. I'm really not. I'm just going to have to set one. And just if you show up, great. Because I've tried to bare minimum get a committee meeting going just to get feedback. And that's kind of been, <clears throat> so I'm just going to have to set a time and say, here it is, if you can do it. But I like that, that Kahoot game. I might be able to get <laughs> people to show up for that one. And if anyone wants the one I wrote, please let me know and I will share it with you. Um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel um, or you can rewrite one as you want. But I, I just threw one together as an example. Other units, what, how are you feeling out there? I've just been dead in the water too. Yeah, I think a lot of folks have been, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to try to meet still for round table and talk about it. Um, there definitely are ways to do some stuff um, and keep folks engaged, even though we can't be in person. Um, have, I'm curious uh, for those of you who are parents, have you? learned any tips or tricks from watching the kids do distance learning this week? One of the webinars that I was on this week, they suggested, because uh, I kind of mentioned that you guys have, that people, the kids are online all day now trying to do distance learning. They don't want to do it for Cub Scouts later. They recommend texting, not emailing, um, the parents once a week, maybe a list of, uh, requirements to do at home and then signing off. So it's not necessarily a virtual meeting, but it is a family type meeting at home. And that was one of the ideas that I thought was uh, interesting. Um, PAC 10, we sent out packets to all the parents with their um, duty to God requirement in it and um, a couple of worksheets with um, different requirements that they could work on with their families at home because we do have families in our pack that do not have access to the internet and so they're actually their online learning is actually on paper too so we've gone that route and then just I've had a couple parents come back saying they're almost done with some of their stuff and what could they work on some more and so that's where we're at right now. I think that's a great idea and it is important to not make the assumption that everyone does have internet access. We, we want to uh, take a little time and, and make sure that the methods we are trying works for people. So Susan, I love that you made those that call because that really does work for everybody. As a, as a mom of a wolf, the, um, those calendars that were sent out were really slick. Um, and it was, it's like something that's small and really manageable. Um, and then just, it feels like just doing it one, one thing a day, just at least keeps everybody engaged. And most of them are not um, digital things. So I personally, I appreciate those a lot. And maybe we can look at as a program or a cub camp or something to extend those. Cause I know that the original one was only a month um, and just kind of pull a couple other activities or advancements for each of the ranks that we could kind of put that together on a daily basis kind of thing. Yeah, those were actually put together by another council and they were kind enough to share them liberally online. Um, and uh, I think there are a lot of resources that are getting put together as I find them. I will share them with units. I know Ray, Eric, and Alex are doing the same. Um, so, you know, 
And likewise, if you find something that you think is really valuable for your unit, um, one of those 30-day challenges, something that could be sent out in paper or online or an email, um, please send those links to us too, because then we can share them more liberally. Um, we're really in a time where we want to lean on what our other units are doing and, and share the wealth as much as we can. Yeah, Roger, be here. Uh, you know, and, and making use of the time is a big deal. I know for the families, I mean, every kid has to do the, uh, uh, the uh, internet protection thing every single year, the cyber chip or the recharter, or uh, sorry, the recharge. <laughs> And then the other piece is in the very front that uh, youth protection, you know, how to protect your child from child abuse. And neither of those are, you know, a great time. But if we can get our families to be grinding those out during this time, you know, then when it comes time to promote these kids, they'll have the, the boxes checked and we can all in good conscience uh, promote them. Liz or, or Ray, is there any, um... I know with the AOLs, they can be finished earlier. If there are families or scouts that have a lot of the requirements or all of the requirements needed, is there something that um, we can do to advance them to the next rank? Or is there still a certain time that they need to be at that rank for that long? So you don't have an arrow of light, they have to be 11 years of age. Um, for for the, the other light. ranks, we actually cannot um, rank them up before June 1st. June 1st, okay. Um, yeah. arrow, arrow of light to go to Boy Scouts is either 10 and a half and arrow of light or 11 years of age to go into Scouts PSA. Right, no. I was just wondering about the other ranks, ranks though. Okay. But, okay. They're, age, they're age appropriate ranks, so grade specific. So, so they're done with their right. badge. They the, follow the, the electives or things like that or things they should be doing. Okay, thank you. Yep, and there are electives. There are that, uh, there's the yo-yo um, adventure that got put online. That is a brand new thing to try out. Uh, that would be worth, worth promoting if you've got uh, scouts who have completed all of their requirements and you want to keep them going with something. Liz, so right can you yeah. This is Shelly. Um, Roger mentioned the youth protection that's in the front of the book that they all need to, I'm not, and the um, cyber. cyber chip. There is a new adventure um, that they can do instead of the cyber chip. If you don't like that annoying cyber chip song, um, <laughs> they can do. And you, you can always tell when the kids have completed the cyber chip because they all sing the annoying song. Anyway, there is a new adventure that they can actually earn a belt loop. It goes along with the yo-yo adventure. It's not something that's in the book. I, for the life of me, can't remember the name of it right now, but if you Google uh, new Cub Scout adventures, you'll find the yo-yo one and it, something with protection, personal protection or something like that. And uh, they can do that instead of cyber chip or along with it. Thanks, Shelley. Uh, Roger B, going back to the question about data promotion, Ray, is that a change? Because the way I've understood it in the past is the unit would set up whenever they're gonna have their promotions. You know, historically we've done April or early May. For, for oh, lion, tiger, yeah. wolf, Lurch bear, weeblo, it's June 1st. first. For weeblos, it's generally February, uh, March time frame when they do it, or when they turn 11. Okay. Thank you. But there's, there's a lot of units that will finish their year, say, in May, and have advanced the kids. But they can't and start working on their new rank until June 1st. So June 1st, right. Yep. Protect the, yourself uh, rule in, in the, the preview that Shelly was talking about was protect yourself rules preview adventure. Uh, you beat me to it. Yeah, I just pulled it up too. So, <laughs> all right. Um, is there any other things? Have you learned anything 
tonight that you might want to try with your units? Um, has everyone kind of got one thing in mind that they want to go back and, and give a give a, uh, an attempt at? Yeah, I'm going to talk to our Cubmaster, John, about the um, Google Live and the um, doing a Zoom thing. Maybe not necessarily to actually complete an adventure, but I think it's important that Cubmasters or the leaders of the unit to touch base with the kids and give them a sense of normalcy a little bit of saying, hi, we're thinking about you, you know, everybody's doing great because I know the kids worry. Yeah, and that was the purpose of our meeting that we held. It was not uh, specifically based on an advancement piece. Um, it was a chance to get together, a chance to laugh and do something as a group. Um, we ended up playing a uh, digital scavenger hunt where they all showed us things from their house. We did show and tell where they all shared something that was important to them. Um, and we also did some sign and says and, and moved our bodies. Um, and it was great fun and it was a little chaotic, but I think they all felt better for having a chance to see their friends. I'm, That's I'm not, also, I was, oh, sorry. I, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, because I have some scouts that have no siblings and they don't, you know, they don't have anybody to, you know, and they get their schoolwork done on Zoom or whatever, but then it's back too. So I've been trying to get them to on that just because it's like that kid's just running around that house with nothing to do. Driving their parents nuts in quarantine. I know I got four of them in my house now. Well, and, <laughs> you know, if, if there are parents trying to work from home, I confess, you know, there are periods of the day where I am not free to entertain my kids. Um, you know, so particularly those kids who don't have a lot of siblings, you know, they're probably – wanting some social time. So it is okay to do some pack meetings that are focused on uh, fun, to do some den meetings that are focused on getting together and keeping folks engaged socially as well. That is a really healthy thing for us to do right now and a gift to give ourselves. Well, and along that lines too, I would encourage all units to do something as a leadership group or as a parent group as well. Um, we all know that scouting is important to us and we are family to each other. And um, yes, the kids need to see their peers and that they are getting a little bit of that, but I would encourage um, all the units to set up a meeting or something for the parents to kind of come together and talk and share just like we're doing here um, to just be able to have time to check in with each other and know that we're all okay and here for each other as well. All right. Um, does anyone have anything they'd like to add in our last minute here? Yeah, I actually had something a little, I've been, uh, Wondering how I've been getting uh, asked by parents about getting rank badges with Scout Shop, you know, being closed, you can't order that online. Is there, is that kind of like just wait and tell, or are you working on some kind of deal? We were, we were doing uh, ordering and free ship or free shipping over 50 uh, mm -hmm. until the stay in place order hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now cannot do that until at least the 13th when we were able to get back into our office. But uh, if you email myself or Shelly, uh, once we are able to, at this point it's 13, uh, we can get those to you. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I was just wondering if it was like- a not necessarily open. Uh, what we'll do is we'll package them on the 13th. We'll package them up and we'll um, um, give you what you need. So you won't be able to you know, walk around the scout shop, uh -huh. tell us what you need, we'll package them up and, uh, and, and hand them to you uh, across the, uh, uh, the shelf that's there in the scout shop. All right, thank you. All right, um, thank you so much for all of you who joined us. We are going to officially end our Cub Scout uh, hour 
Uh, for those of you who are also involved with Scouts VSA, feel free to stick on the line. And in a couple minutes, we are going to get that one started as well. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been uh, wonderful to see all of your faces and to hear your voices. Um, we as a staff, we miss seeing all of you as well. And I know you miss seeing all of your colleagues and uh, Scouts too. So thank you for all you are doing to keep the Scouts engaged right now. And we are very grateful to you. So uh, we'll see you as soon as we are all able to um, and watch, watch the email for more communications from us. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks for the ideas, guys.